Good morning, and good afternoon, some of you good evening. Another webinar from EDU on Go. Every webinar is better than the previous one, or I guess more exciting, more creative. So today we're going to talk about creativity, branding, and uh, we have our guest, uh, Chris Harden. Uh, and uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction of Chris. You guys can read through the website and through the links that we provide. Um, and what to start about Chris? You know, it's, uh, I've known Chris for a few years now. Uh, I worked at a couple of cool projects together. Uh, he is one of the guys that went on Shark Tank. For you guys that know Shark Tank, uh, he has built an awesome brand about trouble. Uh, worked for EA Sports and as a director of development. So, so many cool things that he has done throughout the career. And again, you can read about Chris through the links that we provide you. Uh, before I pass on to Chris, I'll do one real quick uh, housekeeping item here. Uh, below the video that you see me, uh, there is a chat window. If you type your name, you can then ask questions live. So right below the video, you should be able to type in your name and ask the questions live. If you don't see the chat window, please refresh the screen because we inserted this a little bit late. Uh, and then type your name and ask any questions you have. Chris, it's all up to you. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Chris. Ridvan, thank you for the introduction. Uh, yeah, you can look at all the credentials and stuff online. And uh, I'm going to jump right in so that we can stay in our time window. I'm going to share my screen here. And we're going to have a bit of a whiteboarding session. So. Let's see if I can get this screen shared. I got some weird, hang on one second. Google is, Google's done a good job of, of making it where I can't press the button. There we go, okay, full screen. You guys should be able to see um, my whiteboard here. And um, Rizvan, just give me a nod, good, thank you. Okay, cool. So guys, we'll have about 20 minutes for this whiteboarding session. So I'm going to go fairly quickly. That gives me about four minutes to talk about each of these sections over here, which I'll get to in just a moment. So let me ask you to please hold your questions. You can put your questions in there, but we're going to handle those at the end in case people need to drop off at the 30-minute mark. Okay. So what I'm doing, my presentation is built here. It's a little outline. It has a bunch of hyperlinks. I'm going to use those during the presentation. But Edion Go is going to provide this whole file to you so you can go back and get all these hyperlinks after the presentation's over. Okay. What I am doing is I'm building my presentation on something called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. It's a psychological assessment of what humans need to self-actualize and, and meet their dreams. I'm using something very similar. I'm going to call it Maslow's Hierarchy of Brands. And we're going to go up through these very basic requirements of your brand for you to self-actualize up here at the top. All right, the first section that we're going to talk about is quality. Now, don't turn off your, your uh, computers just yet because quality doesn't feel necessarily like a brand thing. But bear with me a minute. I'm going to sell, sell you on quality before we talk about some of the other items here. Okay, so as far as quality is concerned, you can say that content is king and quality is queen. What does that mean then? That means when you're making uh, a presentation, I'm specifically talking to EDU on Go customers here, you're going to make video and you're trying to build your class, you really have to have good video and good audio quality. And if you don't have good video quality or good audio quality, you're going to really be hurting for customers. So here's what happens. You get your video camera, you do your presentation to your video camera, you get really decent lighting, because here's my little light bulb here, and they like what they see. And then you also have a good microphone so people like what they hear. People can tolerate not having good video. They cannot tolerate having bad audio. So make sure your audio is good. Get a good microphone. Don't have stuff going on in the background. But basically what you're trying to do is produce a good quality experience because you are entertaining people. The last thing you want to do is make sure you have some editing software on your computer that allows you to chop your video into pieces and you can get rid of the stuff you don't like. Okay, because if you don't like it, no one else is going to like it either. It's extremely important that you work on the quality of your experience, and here's why. You're going to spend about a fifth of your time on quality, and the rest of the time, four times as much, on promoting what you've built. So invest your time and get something really good, because after a while, either one, your people are going to buy it, they're not going to tell their friends, or you're not going to feel like you can promote it. You're going to feel sad, and you're going to stop your business. So let me really push you to make a good quality experience. How do you do that? You go take some classes. Go see what other people are doing. Find out what you like, what you don't like. Do what you like, 
don't do what you don't like. It's really important to see how other people are doing these classes. This is all fairly basic stuff, but I wanted to get that right up front because it's important for you guys to hear from the beginning that if you do a bad job with your product, selling it is going to be really hard. The last thing I'll say about this is I want you to think it think of quality in terms of a book. Okay? Think if you were writing the next novel and you're trying to you're trying to sell your book or your movie script to Hollywood. Here's your book. It's a bad drawing of a book. Are you going to send the first draft? No, you won't do that. It's terrible. You're going to have some friends review it, some other friends. You're going to do your second draft. The, you're also not going to send that one to publishers or to Hollywood. Now, your third draft, you might start selling. Same thing is true for your class. Okay, Put some time into your class. Beat it up a little bit. Have people tell you what's wrong with it until you get to a point where you know you can actually sell this thing reasonably. And that's all, we, all I have to say about quality, except I will share with you one link here. Um, it's called Crossing the Chasm. If, if you haven't read this, I encourage you to pick it up. It's a general business book, but what it does, it talks about early adopters and late adopters and how you make this gap, this skip over to the early majority. These people won't care about who you are. They care about the quality of your product and the price matching the quality. So this is the early work you're going to be doing down here, but eventually it pays off to make sure your quality is correct so that the people who don't know you will buy your product. Okay, let's get to some of the other good stuff here. Next up, we're going to talk about uh, presence. So you have to establish you have to establish a presence for yourself online. Okay, so presence. What does that mean? Well, the obvious one is social. You have to have a social presence, and you're going to say, "Yeah, Facebook, Twitter, I get it." Let me tell you to do this though. I absolutely love this site. I love this service. I hope you already know about it. If not, Take some time to go in here. Ten years ago, all you needed was a website, and you were good to go for, for locking down your presence on the Internet. These days, you need a strong social handle. So go to knowem.com, and when you go to knowem, it's going to check for you where your social handle is already taken. It'll do the websites and stuff for you down here too, but this is the real power of the Internet. You know, you need to be on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and a couple of those, Pinterest, and lock down your brand. And that's how you do that. You find out your phrase or your word, and you go in to know them, and you find out whether or not you can own that word, and you really want to own that word. And I'll talk more about that with another book here uh, in just a moment. Secondly, story. I cannot overemphasize how important it is that your story that you're telling about your service, your, your, your class or whatever it is you're doing, has got to be cool. It's got to be fun because if you tell your friends, They'll tell their friends, and they'll tell their friends and friends and friends and friends and friends and friends and friends. And this, my friends, is how Kickstarter works. But if you don't have a cool story, if it's boring, it's a no-go. I talked with a guy just a couple of weeks ago. I was mentoring him. He has an oil-changing product, absolutely brilliant product, save a ton of money. He could not tell me a cool story, and I would never share his work on Facebook. I would not tell my friends. It's absolutely too boring. Okay, because my identity is built into the story that I share with my friends. So, what does that mean? If you don't have something cool that you're talking about, talk to your crazy friends. All right, they can come up with something cool for you. All right, make sure you make your interesting story so you, they will, so other people will share your stuff on Facebook. That's how stuff goes viral. Okay, last, let me get rid of these items here, and we'll get back to building your present. The last thing you want to do, or the next last thing here. Is, uh, is exercise. Exercise. Just like you have to exercise your body, you have to exercise your brand. Okay, your, your brand is important for running. That means daily posting, weekly, maybe monthly. Most of us sit somewhere right here on weekly, maybe two or three times a week. If you're a real master at this, you might be doing something daily. But you have to exercise that brand. That means going to Twitter, going to Facebook, going to Instagram, and, and you're just publishing all the time. Little bits of information that will end up making you a subject matter expert. And we'll talk about being a subject matter expert in just a moment. There is a, a wonderful book here. And as I recall, we actually talk about, um, I think we're hoping to give one of these books away today. It's Content Inc. This guy's name is Joe Polizzi. Uh, he effectively owns the world of content marketing as far as a brand master is concerned. He's established himself as a subject matter expert. I strongly encourage you get, to get this book if you don't get any other book. This is where content marketing is, and it's so powerful, especially when you're doing uh, marketing and, and uh, branding on a budget. The last thing I'll talk about is partnerships. 
partnerships. Okay, partnerships. Imagine you're here. That's your website. You got a bunch of other websites, and they're all magically sending traffic to you. It's extremely important that you start building these partnerships with other subject matter experts that can send traffic your way. And here's how you do it. I'll give you a wonderful example. This guy here, uh, his name's Greg Pollock. He's a local guy out of Orlando. He sold his company called ED, called um, uh, Code School for $36 million after about eight or 10 years of being open. He did it, and this is how he told us he did it. Early on, one of the key things he said was he built videos, free videos that went onto partner websites. See this partner website here that teaches people how to uh, how to code in Ruby on Rails, and he makes a little cool little zombie game. Now, what happens is that those people will get this free class. Oh, and they loved it, and they'll eventually work their way back to his site and buy more courses. Establish these early on, and they'll continue to send traffic to you month after month, year after year. We still get some of that even from some of the press. It's really important with partnership sites you do that. In fact, Edu on Go happens to be one of our partners at Trobo, and they send us traffic regularly too. So partnerships are really powerful, and you want to give something away free and of value to those partners and those partners' customers. That's how you do it. Okay. All right, next up. We're going to talk about influence. Let me get all this stuff off the screen here. All right, so you're starting to build your presence. You've got the basics in place, um, and now you're trying to strengthen your influence and reach out to other influencers. The one thing I'll say is these will go back and forth. You have a small presence, you have small influence. As you grow your presence, you grow your influence back and forth, and they swell and they grow together. So let's put influence up here. All right. So what do we mean by influence? Well, early on, you got to use your network because it's free. What does that mean? Friends and family. Talk to those friends and family. Have them come to your stuff, right? And you, want, you also want to help get them to help promote you. If they love you and care about you, they'll do a little promotion for you. It's free. But here's where the work comes in. Let's say you want to get some of those influencers, like media people, bloggers, TV, newspaper, you name it. A few years ago, when we were trying to do Kickstarter for Trobo, uh, what we learned pretty quickly is that media people were getting hounded regularly for Kickstarter, right? <clears throat> oh, do my Kickstarter. Oh, show my Kickstarter. Oh, it's so cool. Kickstarter, 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 Kickstarter. And they just got totally burned out because what they effectively would have going on was people were selling them all day long and they didn't know them. So I'm going to propose to you, you do something a little different here. Here's what you do. Here's the timeline. This is the media person. You go to his article, his blog, her uh, webisode, and you comment. All right? You pass it along. You share it. You become a part of their community. You show them love. Over time, you build their trust. They know who you are, and you are actually friends. And you'll find that some of these people, let's say you do this with a bunch of different um, media people. Some of them just won't work out. They're not, you'll find out they're not the blogger you need to express influence. They're just not. But the others will. And eventually, they'll trust you enough. You say, hey, you know what? I've got this class going. Would you mind letting me do a guest article for you? Would you mind promoting this for me a little bit? Maybe just a mention somehow. Just mention it for me. And they'll do that because they trust you. It's extremely important. Anyone who is a real significant influencer, they need to trust you these days. You can't come in <coughs> without knowing them at the last minute and expect them to promote you. It's, it's rude and it, never, it re rarely, rarely works unless they're desperate for content. All right? Um, okay, so that's how. And I'm going to show you a wonderful website here, if I can get to it, uh, called Isaiah. This whole influencer marketing paradigm has been going on for years now. It's starting to hit mainstream. And the way you know is because there's these platforms like Azia. They're one of the leaders where they connect influential marketers with brands. So if you're a subject matter expert, you might very want to come in here and register yourself as an influential marketer. But if you're trying to promote your class or your brand, then you want to register as a brand and see if you can find someone who will, who will mention you in their Twitter feed who will mention you in their Facebook feed, et cetera, and do some placed marketing for you. All right, so that's Isaiah. It's a great platform for that kind of stuff. All right, and the last thing I'll say here 
is about is, is the last, and it's very important. And don't give up on this one. Is do some advertising. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. Here's how we do it with Trevo. We usually run about a fifty dollar ad. Sometimes this more. We always go on Facebook <coughs> or or Google Ads. All right. I like Facebook a lot. We tried Twitter and some of the others, and they just didn't really have people come back. And uh, what you do is you say, okay, you know, I'm going to run that for seven days. You can really do a wonderful profile on all the people that you really want to reach. So spend time on the profile of who you're sending this stuff to. All right. And then the question you ask is, like, what is the budget? If your class, let's say you get $10 every time someone takes a class. Well, then you basically need to get five customers to break even. That's how you figure it out. What are you comfortable with? But in the end, if you have built a, a quality product and you're working on all this presence and influence and all this kind of stuff, advertising gets you out of your circle. You're here. This is your circle. Advertising gets you over here. It's worth spending a little money if you believe in what you're doing. It doesn't have to be a lot, but it can really, really help. So I encourage you to do some advertising. All right. Let's get on to uh, credibility now. So credibility. Credibility. Here's the deal. You've got all these people that you've got to come over to your, your class <clears throat> or your, your site, whatever. And they're going to ask the one big question, why you? Why am I going to buy your class? Why am I going to buy your product? Why are you credible enough for me to risk my own personal um, um, <clears throat> reputation to get your product? Well, that's where credibility comes in. This is the last part of the sale. This is the closing of the sale and the credibility on your brand. Here's how you do it. I'm going to show you a stack of subject matter experts. These guys are absolute geniuses. Funding the Dream, this guy named Richard Bliss. He is a subject matter expert on everything Kickstarter, and he has a podcast that's brilliant. I would believe anything he told me on Kickstarter, and I, and I would buy his services, and I do, in fact, support this guy on Patreon. Um, uh, Jamie Stegmeyer, Stonemeyer Games, he has a Kickstarter blog. The guy is relentless. He had a $1 million Kickstarter last year for his fourth game. This guy knows Kickstarter, and I've supported him because of all the knowledge he's given me on Kickstarter. Shark Tank, this guy's name is um, uh, TJ Hale. He's absolutely the, the hands down expert on Shark Tank. He probably knows more than the sharks do. I also support him, and I believe anything he tells me on Shark Tank. This is the kind of stuff that you do. You become a subject matter expert. And if you are not one, you might reconsider you're in your class on that. You either you need, either need to be one or you need to become one. Or finally, find some friends and add them to your team. All right, find someone who is a credible subject matter expert and add them to your class so that people, when they come and look at your site, they go, oh my goodness, this is a cooking class and they got this chef that's been doing it for 30 years. This person really knows what she's talking about. Okay, um, that's the first thing you do is credibility. That's the first thing you can do towards credibility is figure out how to establish yourself as a subject matter expert and you do that by relentlessly posting and blogging, whatever your thing is, you establish yourself that way. Um, I can't get too deep on some of this stuff, so I'm just kind of staying high level. But then the next thing you do is reviews and quotes. You need reviews and you need quotes on your website. You got to have those. Those are other ways to establish credibility. Let me show you an example. Kickstarter. This is our little Kickstarter from Trobo. The first thing we did anytime we got an article or an award is we posted it on our Kickstarter. People needed to come in. We got them in there. We need to sell them fast that, yes, they could believe in this product. It's got to be exciting. It's got to be buzzworthy so they can tell their friends. And also, it has to have cool quotes. Oh, here's TechCrunch talking about us. Here's Fox. Here's quotes from customers. Oh, it's a cool product, blah, blah, blah. All of this does one thing. For that customer, it takes risk and it turns it down. It gets rid of the risk for them. They feel like they can, be trust, they can trust you. They feel like they can trust you. All right, that's really, really important. I'll show you one other little thing here out of order. On Amazon, the same is true here, our, our account. And you guys probably have all gone to Amazon, checked the product out, and figure out the number of reviews and whether there are enough reviews to make you feel comfortable in the purchase of that product. In order to get onto Amazon exclusives in January, we had to have at least 10 reviews. We went to friends and families and Kickstarter backers and said, hey, would you show us a little love? Give us an honest review and that way Amazon will allow us into their system, and they did. It's all about credibility. Every system has some measure of credibility, and yours is SME reviews and quotes. And if you can get, if you can get, um, you know, check marks like five star system, get that too. Okay, that's credibility. Oh, let me show you one more uh, on the reviews and quotes. I did jump out of order here. I'll show you two more. Uh, Steve Alcorn, a friend of mine, has a, a six figure 
Income Off of Writing Academy. This is a, a website that teaches people how to write novels. And all the way down here, right before the buying opportunity, here are quotes. Quotes about how um, I love this product. See, that's, that's it's all credibility. Edu on Go does this too. Edu on Go, major logos at the top. Stable platform, thousands and thousands of users, stable platform. All right here, look at all these wonderful logos of these happy customers using the EDU on Go platform. <laughs> all of this says, I'm not going to have to do this without, without I'm not going to have to take risk if I join this system. Okay, that's about risk. It's about credibility. Okay, last one here. We're at the top here. Let me just get rid of this stuff again. The last one and the most important, the self-actualization, and that's traction. Okay, traction. Let's put it up here. Traction or if you want to call it sales. Very important that we have traction or sales. And here's here's the uh, here's the big gotcha. Okay, you are gonna look off the edge of a cliff, you got a backpack or parachute, and you're wondering, hmm, should I jump? And then someone comes along behind you and they push you off. Oh no, I went first. No one likes to go first. I don't care what conversation you're having, if it's about purchasing your product, investing in your company, buying your book, whatever. No one likes to go first. They hate that. It's very uncomfortable for people. You have to overcome this problem. It is your job marketing your class and your product to get over this. And here's how you do it. Okay, I'm get rid of this drawing now. I'm going to show you how people how you get past that fear for people. It's really, I get it, if you don't, especially if I don't know you and trust you, I don't want to go first with your product. The first thing you do is you make it free, initially, okay? And you make it free to first-time users, okay? Friends and family, anybody that comes, you want to get some traction in there. Very important, because why? Here are the benefits. Yes, it's, I guess, free for them, and you don't make money, but here's what you get. You get your numbers up. Oh, 10 people have tried this. 30 people have tried this. When you get into the hundreds, you start to feel really good, okay? But early on, you just want to get some numbers on the books. It's extremely important that you get that. Also, you can say, hey, guy, I appreciate you come check on my, my class out. Would you mind just giving me a small quote, just a one-liner? won't take long. I'll put it on my website. It'll help other people know about my product. And you can be honest. It's cool to be honest. Just I need some quotes. And I need some numbers. Would you come look at it and give me a quote? Thank you so much. This guy here, that's how he did it. I was one of his first customers in this class, Steve's class here. And uh, it just over the years, it just kept building, but he knew he needed to get some traction. Why is that? Because traction leads to more traction. Okay. That's how it works. It's an endless cycle. Okay. So you get those. Now what? You got your, you got your early adopters, uh, you know, the freebie guys coming in, helping you out. They're friends and family helping you out or people that may or may not trust you a little bit. You know, the next thing you do is you have promotions, and sales, you set a regular price, set your price where you want it to be, but then you do this to early adopters. Okay? You might even say, you know, I say early adopters. They're not the they're not the they're not the, the ones that are um, the the friends and family. They're people who, well, they'll put a few bucks into your class and see whether they like it. Okay. That's extremely important because now you're starting to grow your numbers a little bit. But where you're at here, this is that book I mentioned to you guys earlier. This is all the friends and family people and the enthusiasts about your product. Here are the early adopters. Eventually, you've got to get, you got to skip over this chasm here and you got to get to the late majority. Okay? To be clear, late majority does not care about you. They will never care about you. They care about price and market fit. They care about features. That's all they care about. And they don't care about you. They don't want to know that you're the friends of somebody, blah, blah, blah. They want a good product at a good price, and it has to be solid. But in order to get them to even look at you, you have to have good numbers. You have to have that credibility we talked about. You have to have traction. So this is your early traction here, and you get that by giving promotions and sales to the people who are willing to take just a little bit of risk on you. They may or may not know you at this point, but a little bit of risk in exchange for some promotion, uh, in exchange for some numbers and some validation, very powerful. And then the last thing we'll say here, I'm winding down now. Let me get rid of this stuff here. The last thing I'll say is with traction, you have to have repeat sales. Okay. And you might say, I thought we we're talking about brand. Yes, we are talking about brand, but let's let's take a moment 
if you'll bear with me, sales definitely affects brand. So let's say you've worked to get these people over to your sales funnel. They've come in, they had a great time, they loved your product, and now they're gone. Well, man, I worked like I, I worked my butt off to get these people. I don't want to lose them. And so you say, well, it's pretty obvious. I want to have some repeat sales. You need to. What does that mean for you as a class person? Don't have one class. Expand it. Have five classes. Keep adding those classes because you give them something to come back. It's easy to resell that existing customer again and again and again. Don't let them get out of your funnel. This guy here, Steve, he started out with one class years ago. Where's that list at? He started out with one class, novel writing. He expanded it to writing science fiction. And then it was creative writing, nonfiction writing, write your life story, screenwriting. He's got his daughter in this thing, writing for children. The guy knows how to keep his customers. He knows how to keep those repeat sales going. And here's what all that adds up to in the end. And this is the last image I'll leave you with. This is your brand growth. And I'm also going to put sales. All this stuff you're doing gets them in early, early, early. And then if you keep them and you keep growing your presence and you keep growing your influence and you keep growing your credibility, it builds on itself until your sales are so huge that it's sustainable and you're dealing with complete strangers who really love your work. And that's the mark of success for your brand. All right. That's all I have to say there, Red Dan. Wow, that was amazing. That was short and sweet. I know you went a little bit fast. Uh, I did, yeah. Time. Uh, however, uh, for people that wants to watch this again, this is this has been recorded, and also uh, uh, we probably are going to share uh, somewhere that pyramid, the was it the Maslow's pyramid? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can definitely send the, the final triangle out too. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So people can dig down through those layers of the pyramid, starting from quality, presence, influence, credibility, and traction. So this was pretty amazing. Just just so you guys know, Chris has uh, done a successful Kickstarter uh, project. That's why he mentioned Kickstarter. And for some of you guys that don't know what Kickstarter is, go to Kickstarter.com, and you, you it's an amazing website uh, to to build your brand and, and get funding. Uh, so Chris, I'm going to wait for some questions. We have uh, a couple of questions that came via email. So we had a form that people can submit questions before. Okay. Uh, and like, like we mentioned uh, with Google Hangout, there is a short delay, like a 10 second delay. So for you guys that have any questions, please go ahead and uh, type your questions below there. Uh, it was really amazing. There's a comment saying it was really amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, so let me read out the first question from the email, uh, Chris, okay. and then uh, we'll wait for the others to ask questions in that chat window. Okay? okay. So first question is how important is SEO to building a brand? Let's say you haven't done the homework the way you explained, but you just put money in SEO. Would that help the brand? Yeah, you do. You have to have SEO these days, and there's a lot of documentation on it. I have a couple of audio books I've been listening to just recently on SEO. Um, the, re the, the, the addition to your brand that SE uh, SEO gets you, it's, it gets you outside of your own circle. Uh, the hard part is choosing the keywords that really differentiate you and your brand from everyone else here in, in the market. Uh, I think the, SEO, the strongest SEO for us has come from uh, Google. <clears throat> and also uh, Amazon, but um, if you have uh, if you have money, you can spend a little bit on SEO. Do that. It's easy to update your website to be SEO savvy. But you should spend a little time on SEO. That falls in the advertising bracket that I mentioned earlier. SEO is not a uh, a windfall. You have to be very good at it. We're okay at it. I'm not going to lie. We're not the best SEO experts out there. Uh, there is a, a, a partner there at EDO on Go that Ridvan can connect you guys with who's an ex SEO expert named Jason. Um, he's given me a little bit of mentoring. So, uh, But I would say, yeah, we, we have SEO as a part of our brand mix, absolutely. It has not been the biggest part of our, our marketing efforts. Content marketing, the book like jo from Joe Paluzzi, that is the biggest push because it's, it's all about time, how much time you can put in and how rich you can make the experience. SEO is a little mechanical. But if you know what you're doing, it can it can bring people to your to your to your what your class or whatever it is you have. We use it around Christmas time or on holidays to sell our products. We used a lot of SEO back then. We also use it just to keep our presence strong. But uh, I would say 
as far as impact is concerned, maybe 10% of our experience has been SEO. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. Uh, so I'll read the second question from the email, and then there's there are a couple of questions in the chat window. Uh, the other one seems to be pretty pretty quick and interesting. Do you have to be a graphic designer to build a brand? I hear this a lot. You must be creative and a graphic designer. No, you don't. Actually, you don't. It helps. Don't get me wrong. Now, Red Van and I, uh, we share a passion for brand. Um, we're both illustrators and graphic designers, and so um, I've seen a lot of Ridman's work. Uh, he's very talented. Having a graphic design background can help you create quality in your branding. But brand is a lot more. It's a heck of a lot more than drawing a good logo. Yeah. And, and I'm someone who – I can say this because I've drawn well over 100 logos easily, and I know Ridvan has too. When you're an entrepreneur – you, you get passionate about certain things. For me, I love logos. I love color theory. I have a graphic design background. I used to be in comic books. I was an anchor. I had some success there, and I have some formal training too. But I can tell you brand is a lot more than that. When you're building your brand, it's about presence. It's about all those little touch points that come along the way. When people touch your product, when people hear about you in a newspaper article, when people read your blog or they hear your podcast or whatever it is you're building. All that stuff I just named, by the way, didn't have anything to do with graphic design, right? None of that had to do with graphic design. Uh, if you want good graphic design, I will encourage you to go to um, – I'll send you a couple of websites. Fiverr uh, – let me see if I can just bring them up real quick for the podcast here. All right, full screen. Is that okay I'll do that again, do that again Riven? Sure. Yep. We'll All right, let me bring up a couple of websites, I'll, I'll incur and I'll put those in the thing too. So Fiverr. Is a, is a decent one. You can hire people supposedly for five dollars. This is a little more sometimes five bucks to get graphic design done for you. If you want a good logo, uh, I want to say it's ninety nine designs. Ninety nine designs. I have some friends who had probably one of the best logos I have ever seen. They got from this thing called ninety nine designs. They put a, a, a you know they said they're going to pay a few hundred dollars for a good logo. A bunch of people sent logos to them, and then they picked the one, and that person got paid. I love that concept. This is crowdsourced graphic design. That's all there is to it. The same thing is true for uh, Fiverr, which I just showed you. We have uh, whiteboarding videos. You, you want to do a whiteboarding video, you need a little art. These people will do whiteboarding videos or explainer videos. That's another concept. What if you need a good picture? I love 1, 2, 3, R, um, oh, so 3, 2, 1, RTF. Is that what is it? It's, um, 321 RTF, I think that's what it is. Let's see if I get this right, RTF.com. I'm sorry, I'm not using the, my, my main browser. I'm normally using uh, Chrome, so 123RF. I think it's 123RF. Hang on. 123RF.com. Uh, Let's try that again. There we are. 123RF. You can literally pay 2 or $3 and get beautiful photography. So now I've shown you how to get a logo designed, I've shown you how to get beautiful photography, and I've shown you how to specifically outsource stuff that isn't available in a marketplace. Those are three graphic design solutions right there. You can do video the same way or audio. Those places you can outsource, your brand is really more about your presence and you working through getting people to know you exist and, and delivering good service to those guys. Okay, I can't hear you, Ruben. There we go. So I, I muted myself. Okay, so I will read out the questions now from the chat window. Um, one of them is from uh, Adam. Are there tools to keep yourself organized and track progress along the pyramid? It's interesting you say along the pyramid. I hadn't thought about a tool for the pyramid. Uh, I don't know what Ridvan's team uses, but I'll, I'll tell you what we use uh, just for managing, sort of from a project management perspective. Uh, we happen to use Asana. Now, I, we also use Jira for like software development, but I don't really think that's appropriate for this. Let me show you Asana real quick. There's other ones out there. Now, th that's maybe going left field compared to what you're asking. This is a free tool. It's basically a big task list, and you check things off, and you give the tasks to your different friends. You can do some organization with it. And so let's say you, are tr you handed off part of the Maslow's uh, hierarchy. You're working on quality and building your product. You have a friend out there and your friend's going to join your team and you're going to ask her to work on your presence. So she's got to go get on social media. She's got to go start blogging, that kind of stuff. 
you can throw those tasks in Asana. And so we use Asana to manage Trobo, <clears throat> a lot of the marketing tasks at Trobo. And that's, a, that's about all I have as far as recommending tools for, um, for tracking yourself and getting your stuff done. Very cool. There's one more that I've seen a lot of people use. We used it from some of the projects called Trello. Oh, yeah. With boards, so you can create lists and then assign them to different boards. And it's very intuitive how you can drag and drop whatever item from one list to another. So easy to use. Uh, it's Trello. Yeah, I've heard Trello a lot too. So there you go. There's some uh, 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 two references for you for Trello, right? Minimize that risk so you can, you can try it out. Very cool. Okay, next one is from Pasho. Uh, is it a good way to build your brand with ads? And then there's another question from the same person. What about yeah. if we have our target to some people that aren't in social media and they are not used to be familiar with internet? Which is the best way to build your brand? And is it possible to build a brand with this target of people, people that are on social media? All right, wow, that's a good question. Um, okay, so with the first one, ads are tough. You can, you can, the Facebook ad is about the only one I support. Google ads on the side, I support those two. When we spent ad money on uh, Twitter, Pinterest, and uh, Instagram, we just made no money. Now, Instagram is part of Facebook, but I don't really think we still got any traction there. Uh, as far as paying for ads on websites, I don't know. I can tell you this. We did use a company um, called, um, oh, what are they called? It's called Retargeting. R-E-T-A-R-G-E-T-I-N-G, -E -E Retargeting. Ad Roll. Let me show you Ad Roll real, really quickly, and you guys can decide whether it's useful or not. We had some success, but to be honest with you, for the money that we spent, I don't think we got the success we were looking for. This is called re retargeting. I can't really speak to banner ads. I think banner ads were you know, something back from the 90s and people don't really get as much value out of them. But Adderall does do banner ads, but it does it to people who have already come to your site. They are retargeting those people back to your site. So if you've already exposed, been exposed to them somehow on Facebook or on a website, uh, that they visited or on your own site, you can drop cookies on these people's browsers and then Adderall uh, will send them back to your website with targeted ads. That's the whole concept around retargeting. We, I gotta say, you know, the cool thing about Adderall is that we got a lot of eyeballs when Shark Tank ran and we were able to use Adderall to reach back out to those people who did not sign up on our email list. They came to the site, they walked around, we dropped a cookie, and then over the next month and a half, we sent them some more advertising, hoping to bring them back and generate sales. And you can track what kind of sales you can get through AdRoll. It'll go all the way th through the purchase. You can set it up. But I, I dare say, for the money I spent, for the dollar I spent, I felt like I got better traction with Facebook than I did with retargeted ads and, and banner ads. All right, so that's that. And let me stop. Did I screen share that time? I am. Okay. Let me stop screen sharing. Okay, regarding um, the customers who are you know, um, not familiar with social media, uh, I can't tell Red Band from that question if it was also not familiar with internet, but it sounds to me like these customers are, are probably older customers or they're really young customers who don't have computers. Is that what your impression was too? Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. It also not familiar with internet, so. Okay. Um, that's a hard one. I, I will tell you I don't have enough credibility in that space. Okay, you need to speak with someone who's a marketer uh, or traditional media advertiser who buys ads and billboards or they do that kind of thing. I, just like Red Van and a lot of his team, our team does a lot of presentations, but the presentations are at conferences and all of that kind of stuff, and most people who travel there are also familiar with the Internet. I don't have enough um, experience to tell you good advice for marketing to people outside of the internet. Yep. Okay, um, the next question is, you mentioned the importance of consistent blogging and posting. What methods and tools can help keep you on track with that goal? Okay, that's a really good question. Yeah, I'll tell you what you should do first off. If you want to see an absolute genius at this, you really should follow the uh, Kickstarter blog from Jamie Stegmeyer. Okay, the reason why I say that, I'll show you which one I'm talking about one last time here. This guy. He's also a super nice guy. He talks to anybody, he'll talk to him. He's extremely busy, but somehow he pulls it off. This guy blogs, I swear, every day. It is amazing. I don't know where he 
keeps the stamina up considering he's also producing a one million dollar game but he sets the bar and if you can even get close to what this guy does you will be well on track but the way you can do it I, I learned this trick uh, uh, from uh, a friend of mine named Juan on Facebook he has uh, a Facebook page I swear it's uh, 20 or 30 thousand followers just built up a wonderful follower and he told me a trick he said yeah first off on Facebook um, what you have to do is you have to post regularly. Oh, let me see if I can get in here. Okay, I can't get into Pinterest right now because I'm not using the same the right browser. But here's what he said. He goes to Facebook. He's always posting relevant images because he has an entrepreneurial one. He has one for toys. He's always posting relevant images and articles about uh, his subject matter. He's establishing himself as a leader and a subject matter expert via Facebook. That's his platform. But his this is what he told me. He said, I go to Pinterest. I follow subject matter experts on Pinterest, and Pinterest is just it has a ton of material that I can push to Facebook. So now, what that's called? It, it's called you know, reblogging or reusing of media. It's one technique. Okay, it's one technique that you can use. You basically make yourself into a news source for all this stuff that's relevant to your subject matter. But you also really to give yourself credibility, you need to blog. Or you need to podcast on your own and you need to add content and value to that knowledge base because people will start to see through that you're just reposting other stuff if you don't comment and add value as your own as a subject matter expert yourself it'll eventually start to fall through but that combination together of blogging or podcasting on your own or if you do guest articles we did guest articles on like Huffington Post and that type of stuff along with pulling in content from other sources is a great way to build your presence and a great way to keep going that's the hard part is how do you keep going and that's a great way to keep going you're on the mute okay great so uh, I don't see any other questions let me go back real quick I'm switching windows I think that was the last question uh, if you have any more questions uh, we got maybe five minutes left, uh, and while you type your question, uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Chris, we reached about twenty-five uh, oh. users. All right. <laughs> and uh, I know we said uh, we have to reach forty in order to uh, give. We'll raffle the following book. Uh, so I guess we'll, it will be your decision if you still want to give out that book now. Um, yeah. No, we had it at forty. That was the goal. So we gotta stick to our commitments. Let's do it. So I guess uh, so far we had 25. I guess uh, we'll see how many watch it. The recording version. I'm sure sometimes you reach in the recording into hundreds, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, that was it for today. Let me see if there are any other questions. Let's see. Nobody else is typing. So uh, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining, Chris. Do you have anything else uh, you want to add, or should we wrap up? I know. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining. I would say this. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you can certainly do so via my website. My email is on the website. be happy to answer any questions. Um, it, it, anything that you're interested in, look at mytrobo.com or chrisharden.com. You can see the kind of stuff I've worked on. I'd be happy to share knowledge with you or link in with you if you want to link in and just keep the conversation going. Sounds great. Yep, and you have the information about Chris right below the video. So Everyone, thank you for joining, and until next time, be creative, build your brands, and have fun. Thank you, Chris, so much for joining today. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.